the home of the do-it-yourself trucker. When everything goes wrong, you got a redneck in me. Well, what's going on there, truckers? Hey, this is uh, Ed with Redneck and Eyes. I want to welcome everybody to uh, another great Redneck and Eyes, all things trucking and then some. You can call in at 516-387-1733 and be part of the conversation. Just hit one. want to check everybody out to the website, uh, redneckandeyes.com. And we got a lot of links and to our videos, uh, what's going on, our social media accounts, everything like that. We try to keep everybody up to date of where we're going or what we're doing and how things are going. We also have a company store where you can check it out. We got hats and shirts and uh, cool things for the pets and uh, uh, all kinds of good stuff. So, so check that out. And everything that we do is for Redneck and Eyes is we go to support so that we can get together in the parking lot to help truckers. And our goal is really just to create a camaraderie, like a brotherhood of trucking to where we can share information and be as honest and truthful with each other as we can to just help make the industry better. And that's, that's what we want to try to do. So we were given this opportunity to do this weekly podcast here and we couldn't be more thrilled of it. It's, it's been awesome for us. And we really appreciate the opportunity that we were given to just get out there and just talk to truckers as, as often as we can. And what we do is we take, uh, episodes or, or cuts from this to our podcast and then we put it out on YouTube where we can share the information and we get a lot of views. YouTube has been great for us. We, we've uh, really excited about how that's going and we're going to try to keep that going and build it up. And then of course, you know, then, uh, the support we get from that, we're just going to make sure that we can create, uh, just more venues where we can go to different truck shows and just support the trucks support the truckers. And, uh, and that's what we're hoping to do. So, uh, so continue to support that, you know, go, uh, uh, like and share all of our platforms and go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, watch our videos and tell us what you think and give us some comments and shares and likes and, and all that good stuff. And we really appreciate that. So diving back into things, what I noticed, uh, there was an article in this, you know, it was funny. It was on the bottom of the list, uh, that I had and there, we talked about it before because a lot of, uh, trucking industry news outlets was talking about this back in like, you know, October, and November, uh, because it was a thing that the, the, the previous administration was, was pushing for because they wanted to, uh, just help out younger drivers. And they talked about how there were a lot of drivers that were under the age of 21, but over the age of 18 and they can drive truck in the state that they lived in, but they couldn't haul the freight past the state line. They had to stay within the state. So what happened was, is there was a lot of senators in different parts of the country and they are putting a bill out to, uh, to do a federal program. And this was out of a news channel 13 in Kansas. Um, and it's, uh, it was on Friday actually, and it's out of Topeka. And it says that, uh, Senator Jerry Moran was helped, has helped introduce legislation that would address the shortage of drivers in the trucking industry. It says Senator Jerry Moran, a Republican from Kansas, says he and Senators Todd Young, a Republican from Indiana, and John Tester, a Democrat from Montana, introduced the Developing Responsible Individuals for a Vibrant Economy Act in order to address the driver shortage in the trucking and logistics industry and to enhance safety training and job opportunities for truckers. Uh, he goes on to say that Kansas is the birth pl birthplace of the U.S. interstate system and continues to provide a network of safe and reliable routes for interstate commerce and travel, said Senator Moran. As we saw during the pandemic, a shortage of drivers impacts our ability to move goods across roads and highways to support our economy, including transporting Kansas products. The Drive Safe Act allows young CDL holders that meet rigorous safety standards and performance benchmarks to move goods from state to state, addressing the driver shortage while continuing to deliver commodities across Kansas and the country. According to Senator Moran, while 49 states and Washington, D.C. allow residents to get a commercial driver's license at the age of 18, federal law prohibits those operators from moving goods through different states until they're 21. He said the Drive Safe Act establishes an apprenticeship program that allows for the legal operation of the commercial motor vehicle in interstate commerce by CDL holders under the age of 21. Uh, he goes on to say that uh, now more than ever, young, uh, well, this actually is by the other senator. He says now more than ever, young Montanians need more opportunities to get comprehensive job training, access higher pay work, and grow their careers early on, said Senator Ted Tester. This bipartisan bill will do just that, allowing younger truck drivers to get 
top of the line apprenticeships that kick their careers into gear, all while providing a big boost to the thousands of communities across the big sky who rely on almost exclusively on trucks to move goods in and out of the state. Senator Baran said the apprenticeship training program would help ensure drivers are trained beyond current standards will also instituting rigorous safety standards and performance benchmarks. He said the program would require young drivers to complete at least 400 hours of on-duty time and 300 hours, 340 hours of driving time with an experienced driver in the, in, in the cab with them. According to Moran, all, truck driver, all trucks used for training in the program will be required to have safety technology, including active braking collision uh, uh, mitigation systems, a video event capture system, and a speed governor set at 65 miles per hour or under. Moran said Senators Tom Cotton, Republican out of Arkansas, uh, Jim Inhofe, a Republican out of Oklahoma, Angus King, an independent out of Maine, Joe Manchin, a Democrat of West Virginia, uh, Kristen Sinema, a Democrat of Arizona, joined the co-sponsors of the bill, and U.S. Representative Che Hollingsworth, a Republican out of Indiana's District 9, introduced the companion bill in the House. And this, and so... So what this looks like, what it's doing is, is that it's, uh, it's creating, uh, like I said, the pilot program. And, uh, we knew this was coming down the pipe because, you know, drivers have been talking about this for a long time. And we just think that, you know, if, if a pilot program can be introduced, then why not just make it across the board? Um, what I think what this hurts is, is that a lot of these underage drivers, these drivers that are 18, 19, 20 years old, that can't leave the state a lot of them work for these smaller outfits like a father-son kind of thing or a family-owned operation and what what this does is it it forces them to either spend the money to get these uh training trucks or default to meet that criteria you know they have to spend that money when a lot of these drivers that are 18 19 years old they've probably been driving since they were 14 you know because the tr trucking's in the family and you know they've either been in the yard or locally in the in the cities or whatever and they just always learn how to drive so that kind of stuff to me uh it's what's probably the worst part about the bill is that it, it's creating opportunities for these bigger companies to spend money to recruit drivers and of course that's the uh, uh what do you say like you know the downfall of it is that you know you, you the the only people that are really expressing that there's a driver shortage are these larger carriers the larger carriers want to increase the opportunity to train new drivers out of the box instead of going after existing drivers so what they want to do is they want to be able to you know spend that money on these training trucks go after the younger drivers at coming out of high school and then put them into a system to where they can maximize their profits and you know and and we can see that happening and, and you know the more the merrier i think the problem is is that we know that they're sometimes their standards aren't up to par and you know they keep their ducks a row legally because there's a lot of liability for that training on the other hand it just there's there's not big requirement and and what we see here is that they're requiring training for the younger drivers you know if they're going to require training maybe they should require training for a lot of the older drivers too because what we see is a lot of the newer industry whether it doesn't matter how old the driver is if the driver has been in the industry less than three years you know there's a different safe safe level that they come with and then of course they become safer as years go on and then going like eight plus years they become uh, less safe again and you see these carriers they're spending money where you need to watch these videos now then you're good to go for a little while oh you need to watch some more videos coming down the road or you need to go to a safety class because we see that you know the the data shows us that once you enter into this certain year whether it be a six eight year experience range you start getting kind of laxed and and, and kind of you know lazy and in, in your uh, keeping up with all the new laws and everything so that kind of stuff you see it out there and you see carriers doing it all the time uh you know a lot of drivers will tell you that you know they've been driving whether it was 16 17 18 whatever you know they've been driving as long as they they have been and they've always had like you know they've always done real good because you know driving is not necessarily a train skill it's it's a talent you know you a lot of drivers you know i mean i always thought that i was always good at it and i always thought that the more i learned about it the better i am but out of the box i always felt that you know i was drawn to it that i liked doing it and it's something i did well so I always thought that, that that's how I perceived it in my own opinion. And I think a lot of drivers out there feel that way too. So uh, what I think is, is going to happen with this is that it's probably going to be passed through no problem because, you know, they like it to where they can get people to work. And that's always a good thing. Um, 
you're going to see a lot of these big carriers just, you know, kind of, I don't necessarily think they're going to like, you know, take advantage of it and, and bad things will happen. I just think, I think that a lot of drivers will get into it and they'll probably get out of it just as fast as they get into it because driving is not for everybody. And I don't think that this will, uh, impact the driver shortage at all, because I don't think that it's a driver shortage in numbers. I think it's just driver shortage of quality that there's, there's not enough drivers out there that these other carriers, these smaller or more independent carriers where they have a uh, harder customer base, where the customers say, I need it here by this time, or I need it picked up at this time, or I need this amount of miles traveled, traveled at this time. You know, a lot of those carriers, they're the ones that have a hard time finding drivers. They don't complain that there's a driver shortage because they've got a stack of applications, you know, that they can pick from. It's just that finding drivers that they can depend on, finding drivers that will show up when they say they're going to show up, that are not going to get tickets, that are not going to get log violations, that are going to check the truck out like they're supposed to, that are going to report problems when they need to, you know, stuff like that. That's that's what carry owners of carriers want is they want drivers to communicate. They want drivers to be on time and be reliable and to show up when they want to show up. Uh, you know, when, when I worked in a dispatch office Mondays were, you know, let's go get all the drivers out of the house day because that would, they would go home. They would get the weekend off, you know, by, by golly, that would happen. Maybe, you know, where they would get home on a Thursday or a Friday and they say, okay, I'll see you Monday morning and come Monday morning. It wouldn't be until three o'clock in the afternoon. Did you hear from the driver? Sometimes it wouldn't be till Tuesday morning. You'd hear from the driver said, Oh, you said you'd be ready Monday morning. Oh, I know something happened is, you know, maybe you should have called and said something, you know, talk to, you know, and, and you know that you're at home right now with a, with a hundred thousand dollar truck, that truck doesn't belong to you. You know, that truck, the bill's got to get paid. So when you tell somebody you're going to be off and you're going to be ready, you need to be ready, you know, and if you can't, then, you know, you need to let them know because a lot of care, like we would say, we would get messages across our uh, dispatchers, uh, computer screens. You know, if the driver ain't coming out, you know, when they say they're coming out, go get the truck. You know, they, that's what they say, go get the truck, you know? And, uh, and a lot of times that's, that's what they want. They want the trucks, you know, drivers get time off. They understand that. But the problem is, is that when the truck's sitting at the guy's house and he ain't coming out of the house, he ain't going to work, then, you know, they got to do something because they got drivers sitting without trucks, especially when there's drivers sitting, waiting on trucks you know, that they have drivers ready to go with no truck and you got a driver at home with a truck and he won't go to work. So, you know, just think about that next time that you're, you know, if you're a new company driver and you're thinking about taking some time off. Uh, actually I felt, I felt for that too, because I was, I had to take a, a period of time off. I told them and we, everybody knew, you know, we all knew and, and I parked the truck at the yard and, and all that. But, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't communicated to me that I needed to clean out the truck. He said, he said, just make sure that the truck's at the yard. I said, okay. And I put the truck in the yard and left all my stuff in it. And when I came back, they had actually cleaned out my truck because his idea of truck at the yard means like cleaned out. And I had no idea he wanted it cleaned out. If he had told me that I'd have cleaned it out, but you know, he didn't tell me to clean out the truck. He told me just make sure it's at the yard. So, uh, and that was back shoot. That was back in like 1999, 1998. Uh, that was when I first started. And, uh, it was one of those where I knew, I mean, I'd only been driving truck for probably about four months. So, you know, it was one of those things. It was a learning curve. You know, luckily I didn't, I didn't have a lot of stuff. So, you know, it was more clothes than anything else. But, uh, but that's, that's what we go through, you know, in the trucking industry is that, is that it's not necessarily just drivers and numbers, you know, freight's moving up and down the road all the time. It's, it's just that finding drivers that can be reliable, show up when they're supposed to show up any driver out there that's that's been an owner operator or had their own authority that's ever tried to attempt to hire drivers they know the cost that it takes you have to pay for insurance you got to pay for workers comp you got to you know do all these other stuff and then you know if the guy don't want to show up you're out those expenses you don't get that money back so so that kind of thing you know it's it's expensive and i think a lot of drivers out there they know that more than anything and that's why they don't want a lot of rules restricting whether or not they can get a driver in or out, they want to be able to get the drivers in, get the job done, and then and then get them out. You know, get them going. So, because because some drivers, you know, it's kind of like uh, just like we were talking about before with the carriers that are, you know, they they don't mind hauling freight, making money, and then shutting down and moving on. Uh, there's a lot of drivers who do the same thing. You know, they they just want to move on, and eventually they run out of options. You know, and and then they won't get hired again. But you know, it's it's a circle. It's a revolving door. And it's not necessarily to do with the shortage of drivers. It's just 
there are so many drivers out there that are looking for the next big payday that they'll go from a carrier to carrier within, you know, six months to a year times. And, you know, they're, all they're looking for, their signing bonuses. That's what they want. Or they want some kind of uh, special plus, or they want a new truck and all that. And they'll, you know, they'll, they get those carrots dangled out and they go running, you know, so things like that. Just, it's, it's a big, you know, like I said, revolving door. Uh, it doesn't seem to ever stop. It seemed to be that over here in the last probably 15 years that I've, that I've seen it and been aware of it, that it's never stopped that, that, you know, hiring drivers is probably one of the hardest things to do as a carrier, as a, an owner of a carrier. It's uh, finding drivers, you know, trucks get worked on. That's easy. Freight gets booked. That's easy. Uh, but finding drivers, finding drivers that are reliable, that'll show up when they want to sh- say they're going to show up. That's the hard thing. So, uh, so I think that's, uh, I think it's good that they're looking at the pilot program because I think that uh, w- they'll come on down the road that they'll see that it's not that big of a deal, especially when you've got 49 states that allow 18 and over under 21 to in the state. But again, if you're federal, you can't cross a state line unless you're 21. I think that that's probably going to change. You'll, you'll see that change here shortly. Um, and of course, we all agree. I think a lot of truckers out there will say that if you're old enough to fight for your country, then you're old enough to drive a big truck for your, you know, in the country you, you live in. And uh, uh, maybe maybe there was a reason why they, they had it at 21 before. Maybe there was there was some kind of incentive that they wanted people to join the military rather than go to work right out of high school like that. I don't know. But, you know, you can be a plumber, you can be an electrician, you know, you can be uh, uh, you can be a soldier. So, you know, why not a truck driver? And uh, and I think that this this will get changed. I think that they'll just blend it in to everything else. Hopefully what they'll do is they'll keep it all. They'll keep the, the training standard for all drivers and they'll keep the age lowered for all time. And uh, maybe that's one way we can look at it to going into you know, a more of a, of a training standard requirement, because that's what OIDA has been fighting for. That's what, that's what ATA that represents the bigger carriers have been fighting against is, is safety standards when it comes to training, you know, so maybe, maybe this is it. Maybe this is the beginning of something here. So you never know, but we'll continue to follow that and keep every, everybody updated. And we hope that, uh, you know, if you got anything to say about it, like I said, ring in, let us know, uh, comment, uh, on our, uh, Facebook page or Instagram or Twitter, Uh, let us know on there too. And like I said, we'll be putting this video out with the link to the article on YouTube as well. So uh, we'll get that out there. But, uh, but again, like I said, just check us out, redneckandnize.com. And uh, one of the great sponsors that we've gotten here uh, this last year was uh, LTR transportation and uh, load, load to ride, load to ride transportation. They, uh, a great little outfit out of Denver, Colorado. They got some really cool trucks, um, awesome trailers, neat logo, and, and it looks like they've got some really cool pay packages too, to take care of their drivers. You know, they, they do all kinds of stuff. They do the, uh, uh, they have, it uh, looks like they have some reefers, I'm not real sure how many, but it looks like they do it all, you know? And of course they're linked to a lot of the, uh, freight management systems to where the warehousing and, uh, shipping yards, uh, overseas stuff like that. So you can get in and out of, you know, different like rail and all kinds of stuff. So, so they're linked to all that too, which means that there's a lot of work to do. So if you're looking for a place where you can just, you know, go out there and work and get the job done and show up, you know, if you want a place where, you know, Hey, I want a place that when I show up, I'm going to have work to do. You know, well, it sounds like to me, they got plenty of work to do over there. And, and, and if you're one of those drivers that, that says I'll show up when I, when I say I'll show up, then, you know, load to ride might be the place that you're looking for. So uh, go check them out. It's LTR And, uh, and like I said, let them know when, uh, you know, when you, when you give them a holler over there, uh, reach out to them, they got a Facebook page and, and they got email. Of course, like I said, it's uh, LTR transportation.com and just let them know you appreciate them supporting Redneck and Eyes because we really appreciate them supporting us. And we really look forward to them uh, helping us out here in the years to come. You can give them a call at 720-277-0030. And like I said, they're based out of Denver, Colorado. And, uh, and there's just, it's a great outfit. And, uh, I really liked working with them here with us during the truck shows and events and everything. And we hope that uh, it stays, stays like that for a while. And, uh, like I said, give them a shout and we appreciate it. Like, so we should always support the companies that support the trucking industry, like, you know, at the truck shows and online, uh, events such as this, where we can have a podcast or share videos online and everything. I think it's important for the industry 
that we uh, stay in touch like we do and kind of keep up to date on what's going on. So, uh, so yeah, check them out. We really appreciate, appreciate them for supporting us. And uh, we're going to step away here, take a little break, and we'll be right back. Appreciate everybody. Mm-hmm.